Okay, today we're going to go over how to cut a luxury vinyl plank. Um, you'll need a few basic tools, a T-square and a ruler. In some cases, you know, if you're doing a larger area, you may need a, a, a bigger ruler. It's really nice to have some with a cork back. Keeps it from sliding around on you. Um, and some sort of a marking device. So if it's a harder tile, you know, the, a lot of these on the back side have some sort of an underlayment built into it. Some are cushioned, some are a little firmer. Um, in this case, it's black, so you'll want to have something that's light uh, to mark on it that you can see well, uh, and something that's going to make sure that it works on it well. Um, so with this one being a little bit more cushioned, I don't know if you can see that when I push on it right here. There's a little bit of cushion to this. That makes it a little bit harder for some things to ride on. Um, so in this case, we're going to test out a few different things to see what's going to ride on it well so we can see where our marks are. You know, in generally a pencil or a pen works. You know, I can see my mark with my pencil. I don't know if you can see that in there. I'm going to draw a little X right here for the pencil. With just the right lighting, the pencil will show up. Um, you can try a colored pencil. I like to go with white. Uh, in this case, it does not write on there. It's too soft. Something else you might find works out really well are chalk markers. Uh, a lot of times you get these uh, any place that a, a kid wants to draw on a window or something like that. Um, they leave a nice film on here that once it's shook up and ready to go, Oh, there we go. Leaves a nice mark there, really easy to see. It's a little bit broader stroke, um, so if you're doing really precision stuff, uh, it might not be the best solution, but for most basic things, uh, these are floating floors, so you need to leave a little expansion gap anyway, and so in most cases, that little bit of precision is not going to matter because it's gonna be covered up, your edges will be covered up by your baseboards. So in this case, Let's take a look at um, cutting off just a corner in case you're going around a piece of furniture or a closet door or something like that. And we'll make it interesting because in many cases you need to go around a doorway. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say I'm going to cut out a section T-square doesn't line up on this edge real well. There we go. Since my marks aren't great on that side, we're going to use the other ruler. And we're going to say we're going to come in four inches from the edge. And then we've got another one that is four inches from there. And then we've got an extra spot in the middle that, that juts out. I'm gonna bring up my T-square. We're gonna mark that full area. And say this, inch, this one comes an inch past. An inch past. Here's my marks for that. The beautiful part about these chalk markers is if you're doing this on a non-porous surface, you can wash the chalk off when you're done. If you're doing this on wood, uh, you got a lot more work ahead of you. So this is the area I want to cut off. Let's bring that back and mark all the way to the edge here. Now 
Now to cut this, we're going to use a jigsaw today. Always make sure that you have your finished edge on the bottom when you're using a jigsaw because it does pull the saw blade up. And so anything that's at the top may have a tendency to have a little bit more of a, a jagged edge or frayed edge, but on the bottom side of where you're cutting, it will be nice and clean, assuming your blade is sharp. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. It's important to go nice and slow when you're using the jigsaw. This helps keep that blade from helps keep the blade nice and sharp. And there you have your custom cut. As you can see here, that chalk is not absorbing into that material since it's non-porous. And if you needed to get rid of those marks, you can. If it gets on the front side, which you really shouldn't be marking on the front side, but if it gets on the front side, Let it dry, and you can just wipe that off too. So once it's dry, it just goes away. And there you have the custom cut. Next we'll go over if you just need to cut off the end of the plank, then you can use a simple vinyl tile cutter, and we'll show you how that works. Right. If your tiles are narrow enough or you have a big enough uh, laminate and vinyl cutter, uh, this is a really nice way to chop off the edges to, to help with your staggering. Uh, makes a nice clean square line. And so these are pretty simple. You just line up your tile or your plank and then this pulls down. In this case, it's going to punch out a section of the middle. Some of them have more of a blade style um, that cut it. Uh, either way works really well, so we're going to give this a go. Assuming that you've, you know, assuming that you've marked your spot that you want to cut, you know, this already has a square edge, um, but it's always good to have a line. Um, let's go ahead and mark that first. In this case, you know, we're still cutting down into the surface, so I'm going to draw my line on the surface. You can see that with the pencil line. And make sure that's nice and centered in, in your groove. Keep your fingers out of the way. And punch her through. <laughs> that is a thick tile. Holy smokes. Then you get your line. These are going to leave a little bit rougher edges depending on what type of product you have um, because it's not a sharp blade. Um, it's more of a punch. And let's see if we can see where that punch went. Oh, you can see right here. So it takes out a chunk about as what you know as wide as that blade or as wide as that yeah we'll call it a blade if you have a wide plank like this um, a lot of times a narrow blade saw is not going to give you the cleanest cut it might might wiggle a little bit so in that case you probably want something like a circular saw a radial arm saw or 
a vinyl or laminate tile cutter that can accommodate that size. Uh, in this case, we're going to use another power saw, but I'm going to mark the spot I want to cut, and then we'll take it over to the saw. All right, in this case, we're going to use a circular saw. Uh, as always, make sure you pay attention to what direction the blades spin so that it's coming from, that it's hitting the finished surface first. In this case, the blade's gonna be spinning upward again. So we're gonna make sure we have the finished edge down. And let's go ahead and cut it. That blade was sharper. Ha, 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 ha.